Hello, hello, good evening. It's Monica from Life is Art, and it's Wednesday. Let's create, and I'm just getting everything all a little wonky doodle here. <laughs> we are going to be creating something a little bit different today. We're not making a card, we're making a little treat box. And I had a little bit of a conundrum whether I was going to show this today or whether I was going to wait and um, share it during the upcoming crop that's happening um, March 7th to the 10th, where we're exploring the tales of Beatrix Potter as we do our crafting. But I thought, you know what, let's do it today. Why not? <laughs> and this was a, um, this was something that Karen had asked me to do a video on. And so I'm finally getting around to doing it, Karen. And um, I know in the meantime, she's made at least one of these and they look awesome. And so obviously she sorted out how to do it. And this was um, inspired by a Pinterest post by Joe Dumbleton. And um, so we're going to be creating this today. If you're joining me live, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching later on replay, you can say replay now. You can see that I'm holding a piece of mulberry cardstock in my hot little hands. Actually, chilly hands. It's very cold here in Brampton today. We started out at about 16 degrees earlier today, and we're heading down to minus 12. That is a huge drop in temperature for one day. And I was just out driving kids around and doing some stuff. And oh my goodness, it is like bone chilling out there with the high winds. Oh. Stay inside if you can. <laughs> hey, Heather, nice to see you're watching. Yes, crazy weather indeed. Now, I am using the light side of the mulberry. You can see here that our cardstock is double-sided. The darker side is the true color side, and I'm going to be using the lighter side of the mulberry. And this piece is eight and a quarter by three and a half inches. So eight and a quarter by three and a half. I'm going to grab my bone folder and a ruler because we're going to do some scoring. Yes, Heather, the wind is just awful out there right now. Um, every time I go outside, which is about four or five times already this afternoon, my recycling and garbage bins are blown all over the place. So we keep straightening them up and they keep getting blown down and it's just a losing battle. I think we need to... Um, to tie them down. Thankfully, there's not much in them, so at least they're not like dumping all over the place. So that's something, I guess. <laughs> but I'm glad to be inside where it's warm in my craft room doing some crafting with you guys. So we have our eight and a quarter by six and a half piece of mulberry cardstock on the light side. We're going to start scoring along the eight and a quarter inch side at two inches. This is going to be super simple scoring. That's what we like, super simple scoring. So two inches, we're gonna score that right from top to bottom. Then we're gonna shift over to four inches. This is gonna be one of those cheerleader type of scoring projects. We're gonna score at two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? <laughs> so we're jumping over now to six inches. And we're going to line everything up and score at six. And then our last score line will be at eight inches. So just think of a cheerleader and you'll have your measurements easy peasy. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, now we're going to turn 90 degrees. So we're working with the um, six and a half inch side now. And we're going to kind of repeat ourselves. We're going to score at two, four, and six. So let's score at two inches and then four inches and finally at six. So what we're creating is a two inch by two inch grid with a little bit of leftover bits <laughs> because we have this skinny little quarter inch tab at the end here and we have a half inch tab across the top. Now we need to do um, a little bit of trimming. So don't know if you could see the score lines in the um, 
Oh, sorry. I've got hiccups. I took a sip of water before I started talking, so now I have hiccups. I don't know if you can see the score lines, but we've got our little quarter inch tab. And I'm just going to draw here so you can see this very bottom rectangular quarter inch piece we're going to trim off. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors and we're going to just follow along the score line up to that first intersection and we're just going to trim off that long little rectangle just like that. Okay, so that's that little quarter inch little bit there. That's done. We don't need that. Okay, and that's our only trimming off of things. However, we do need to do some folding now. Now everything is going to be folded as a mountain fold, except for one score line. This score line across the top of this um, piece where this half inch tab is, that's going to be valley folded. And when you valley fold something, you push the score line down into the valley and that lifts the paper up. So we're going to just score that across. That's our half inch tab up at the top. Okay, increase it down. Now we can fold that back down flat. Paper has a memory. And so once you've scored it once, it's going to remember that we did that. Hey mom, nice to see you're watching. Now everything else is going to be scored or folded as a mountain fold. And that means we're going to use our hand. We're going to push the score line up the mountain from behind and that pushes the paper down on either side and make sure everything is nice and straight because we didn't use a scoreboard and we're going to crease that first two inch line now we're going to do everything so we're going to go to the next one we're going to push it up the mountain from behind we're going to lay it down crease everything So that's our four inch and then we're going to go to our six inch and we're going to push it up the mountain we'll flip it over this way so that we can see the paper underneath and we just keep doing that now we've got to this little eighth of an inch so again we're going to push that score line up and so these pieces will fold to the back score that down and now we need to do all of our horizontal ones, which is just the two and the four inch, because as you remember, this six inch one, we folded valley fold. So we're gonna mountain fold this two inch one. So we push it up the mountain, all the folding. <laughs> Good evening, Joanne, nice to see you're watching. Hello, hello. Everybody's staying cozy and warm. And then our last score line, another mountain fold. And because we've got a light side and a dark side to, or a true color side to the paper, if you want to think about it this way, when you fold mountain fold, you're folding the dark sides together. And when you're folding valley fold, the light sides are getting folded together. So if that gives you a different way of looking at it, then you can totally look at it that way. Okay. Now um, we need to do a little bit more trimming. So this, this is a treat box. Remember we said it was a birdhouse treat box. And so we need to create something for the bottom of our box. So these little score lines, the two, four, and the six here at the bottom, we're going to do just like we did over here. We're going to trim from the bottom up to that first intersection of the score lines just like that and we're just going to make um like little feet little flaps to fold in the bottom of our birdhouse so we're just going to do this on all of those just right smack dab on that crease line right up to that first intersection with the horizontal score line so now we should have four little flaps just like you would have four flaps on a box at the bottom okay because we are create sorry my hand is itchy um if you hear me scratching just scratching my hand um because we're creating a birdhouse we need to have a little window a little way for our birdies to get in and out so to speak 
And so to do that, I've got my circles thin cuts. You know, I love my circles thin cuts. I use them almost every project, it seems. And I'm going to be using the one and a half, yes, one and a half inch circle thin cut. Now you could also use a punch for this. And we need to create the circle in this square right here. So not the bottom, that's a flap. The one that's right beside this quarter inch um, tab right there. Okay, that's where we're putting our circle. And we're going to use a bit of washi tape to help hold that in place so that it doesn't shift around when we put it through our dime cut machine. And we're basically going to eyeball it. I'm just going to kind of center that die in the middle of that square. And grab my die cutter. There we go. I'm going to create my sandwich. Now, my die cut machine only fits six inches. Oh, good. oh no, what are we going to do? This is six and a half inches. Well, you remember, we've got this half inch tab that's going to fold over. So we're going to create our sandwich. We're going to stick this on our bottom plate, making sure it fits everywhere with that tab folded over. That's going to keep us from, you know, mangling anything. Put on our top plate and we're going to run it through. But I'm only going to run it through just far enough to cut that circle. I don't need to send it all the way through. So just, there we go. And back out. And set that there. We'll get rid of this because that's all we needed it for. I always store it on the floor. <laughs> I always figure it can't fall any further. So there's our die cut piece. We could use that for something else. And now you can see there's our little half inch tab. We've got our circle cut nicely out from there. Now I want to use this as a treat box. But if I have a treat box with a hole in it, I know we just made a hole. Now we're going to fill the hole. Because if I have a treat box with a hole in it, my treats are going to fall out. So I'm going to turn this over to the dark side, the inside of my box. And I'm going to either use acetate or in this case, whoops, where did it go? I just had it in my hand and it flicked away. Um, I In my drawer, I usually keep a piece of um, memory protector that I'm cutting up. So down here in my drawer... I have, you know, big old 12 by 12 memory protector. And sometimes it's ones that, you know, have gotten a little bit damaged somehow. And if I need to use acetate or something that maybe I don't have a specific size for, I just trim a bit of the memory protector. And it's sturdy enough and it will hold good enough. Um, we're not trying to make a shaker, although you can use it for a shaker. We're just wanting to keep our treats inside. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my red tape here, my super sticky tape, and I am going to go around this circular opening with my super sticky red tape. And hopefully there's enough clearance that I can go all the way around without having the tape go inside the circle. That's what, that's what we're aiming for. So I have cut a two inch by two inch piece of the memory protector or the acetate. Uh, some people like to save packaging if you want to kind of recycle something. So save some packaging and use the clear plastic from that. Um, you do you. you whatever works for you is fine by me. <laughs> and I'm just going to add this around here. Now when you're adding something that's plasticky like that, you need to have good, good adhesive. Uh, liquid glass would probably work quite well. Um, there's probably tons of things that would hold the, the memory protector on there. Um, I'm just using this sticky tape because I have it, so I might as well use it. And I find getting the backing off of that red tape is a little bit tricky. So I like using my piercing tool for this. Just kind of run it under and get that edge coming up. And they're also very staticky when you take them off. So what I do, I'm kind of going off screen with this, but I'll show you what I do. 
I take it and I put it down on my desk because the static will kind of cling it to the desk instead of to my hand. If I go try to put it in the trash right away, it's going to stick to my hand and I'll be, you know, doing this for five minutes trying to get the piece of plastic off of me. So, you know, you kind of learn these things as you go along, but um, I find it easier just to stick it to my desk for now and then later uh, I will tidy it up and put it in the trash when I don't have to, you know, do this for five minutes on live camera. Okay, so I've got my two inch by two inch piece of memory protector, and I'm just going to lay that on top of my super sticky tape, make sure it's all stuck down. And now if I flip it over, hopefully you can see the shine of that in the lights. And there we go. So we've got a nice little window um, into our birdhouse. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to stick our box together to create a rectangular box first and so I'm going to grab my glue for this I could use the red tape but glue will work and we're going to this is with our light side up we've got our circle here we're going to this quarter inch tab and we're going to apply some glue all the way along it try not to go too excessive with the glue and then I'm going to fold over this first score line right there. So we're going to fold this over, making sure that tab is still um, straight out and the glue side is up. And then we're going to fold on this last one and fold it right over on top. And I find that that is the easiest way to get everything to line up nicely and be nice and straight and true is when you fold everything flat. Now we can also fold it, whoops, there it jumped out. I didn't wait long enough. The glue wasn't sticking. <laughs> I should be using my art glitter glue. It's a little bit, a little bit tackier. But once we've kind of got that settled, we can fold it the other way too to make sure that everything is nice and straight and good and give that a second to just adhere okay and we can even come back to the original like that okay i think that's doing pretty good now we have the front of our birdhouse has our little circle and then down here at the bottom we've got our four flaps so we need to close those like a box so we're going to fold one flap in and then we're going to add some glue because I kind of like having each layer glued. So we're going to go to the opposite flap and we're going to add some glue. We don't have to add a lot, just enough to keep everything in place. And when we're folding these down, you want to make sure that you're keeping everything as square as you possibly can. Then we're going to add some glue to one of these flaps and stick it down. And then our last flap and here I'm kind of hurrying because what I want to do is to get all the flaps glued down and then park it. <laughs> you got to park it and then I'm going to take my glue actually close it up and I use the bottom of my glue to give some pressure onto that bottom of my box and make sure everything is sticking where it should stick. Okay, you can even take the back of your bone folder and get right in the corners. Make sure it's all stuck down. It's always good to make sure everything's stuck down that should be stuck down. Now, one of the things that you need for this is some kind of clip. Um, I wouldn't recommend a paper clip, but you can get um, fun little clips in various colors. I just have one of these little um, binder clips. It's a teeny tiny, like a quarter inch binder clip. So I'm going to use that to, um, to hold close my box. So to make the roof for our little birdhouse, we have our circle here, and we want to have this part of the roof tapering in like this. That's kind of our gable end. And we'll have the flat parts of our roof on the sides. So what we're going to do is this is the front where, the, um, where that circle is. And I'm just going to turn it sideways. I've still got my point, my finger pointing at the front. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from both sides and push those sides in. You see what's happening? We're kind of creating a little divot. And then I'm going to take my thumbs and my middle fingers and I'm going to squeeze these other sides in towards the center. And that will automatically kind of bring those two front and back pieces in towards the center pretty evenly. And then we're just going to pinch the top together. Now, you'll notice this kind of caved in. So when that happens, you just push your hand inside and give it a little bit of encouragement to stay out. <laughs> stay out. We may even need this. There we go. And the back side's looking good. Once you have it pinched, the other thing I like to do is to take my thumbnail and just kind of run it from here to that corner. And that kind of helps make a little bit of a crease just to make sure that these little corners kind of pop out the way they need to pop out on each of those gable ends. And the other thing we can do is we can kind of pinch a little bit farther down, a little bit farther than that half inch tab at the top. And that will also help everything to kind of settle into place. And then our little clip is going to go on top to hold our treat box shut. And the reason we want to do that is because we need to fill our treat box still. And then somebody's gonna need to open the treat box. So instead of having something that can't be opened without ruining it, we just are just gonna use a little clip. <laughs> and that means we can open and close and open and close, take a little treat out now and again and put it back together. And we can even reuse it if we want to. So we want to do a little bit of decorating on this super cute little birdhouse. Um, it kind of has that milk carton type look right now, but we're going to jazz it up with a roof. And to create the roof, we have a piece of periwinkle cardstock that is two inches by five inches or five inches by two inches, either way you want to look at it, two by five. We're going to line it up with the five inch side and we're going to do some scoring we're going to score it at two inches we like our two inches on this project don't we we're going to score it at two inches at two and a half which is the center of our five inch length and then also at three inches so two, two and a half, and three inches. And now to fold this, trying to put my ruler down, I won't go back in the drawer. <laughs> to fold this, our center one, the two and a half inch score line needs to be mountain fold. So we're gonna push the score line up the mountain from behind and fold it in half. And I am using the dark side of the periwinkle for the roof. Frankly, we're not really going to see much of this cardstock, but we decided to keep the color family going that we're going to continue with. And um, these colors were inspired by the Sweet Moments collection because we're going to be using some pattern paper from Sweet Moments for this. So we've got our mountain fold in the center of our five inch piece. And then these two half inch score lines on either side are going to be valley folded. And so for a valley fold, you push the score line down into the valley and that lifts our paper up. Whew. Pardon me, I had a sneeze sneaking up on me. So we're going to create a valley fold on this side of our mountain fold and we're gonna create another valley fold. So we're pushing our score line down into the valley and lift that up. And now we have something that you may recognize as the shape of our roof. So this is a second piece that's going to go on. It's going to cover over the opening of our box so that it looks like our box is all sealed up and it's going to be creating our roof. But, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Hey Deborah, looking cute. Yes, are you are you crafting along? 
So this is now the base for our roof, but we're going to add some pattern paper to this. So I'm going to set that aside and bring in a piece of this periwinkle pattern paper from the Sweet Moments collection. And to create a fun little sort of gingerbready look to our birdhouse, I have pulled out ye old punch from I, Martha Stewart from umpteen years ago. I was looking for some kind of scallop die cut and I found a couple, but they didn't quite work. So I thought, you know what, I'll just get out my punch and I'm going, to, I probably didn't tell you, this is a two inch wide strip by 12 inches of the pattern paper. And we're gonna put it in our punch and just punch ourselves a nice little edge. Creates lots of fun confetti. And I find that it's not quite wide enough, so there's always just that little, tiny little bit to trim off like that. Now, I'm not going to clean this up yet because we're going to repeat this a few times. Then I'm going to bring in my little photo trimmer. And I've so I've got this lovely scalloped edge. I want to cut my paper to an inch and a half. So I'm going to use my little photo trimmer here, and I'm going to line it up and have my little scallopy edge just touching that inch and a half mark and then trim it off. And that gives us a nice little piece of shingle for our birdhouse. So we're going to repeat that a few times. So let's see that again. We're going to take our nice little edge scallopy and we're going to Trim our nice little scallops, scalloped edge. Now, if you wanted, you could try to do the liney uppy thing and have it move so that the scallops weren't all one directly on top of the other, but that seems like a lot of work. So <laughs> I'm just gonna do it the same way every time. And we're gonna trim it again at one and a half inches. And then we're gonna repeat, wash, rinse, and repeat. And give herself another scallopy edge. Now, by the magic of Facebook, I have already done three of these. So um, we're going to need a total of six of these scallopy edged shingles that are one and a half inches. And it's always good if you're using a punch or a die or something to create that scallopy edge that you... Um, do the trimming after so that you can get the right measurement because um, sometimes you put a little farther into the punch, sometimes you don't put it as far into the punch, or if you're using a die, you might not line it up in exactly the same spot every time. So it's better just to get your scallopy edge and then trim it to the size. That's my, my advice. Now I want to do a little bit of inking on the edges. So I've got one of these wedges from the round sponge. I've got some periwinkle ink here and you can tell that this sponge has been well used, well loved, and I'm just going to use one of the edges of it. It doesn't have to be fancy. We're just going to take this and we're going to ink down the sides like that and along the edge of the scallop. And what that's going to do, it's going to add a little bit of dimension and it's going to actually help those little scallopy edges kind of stand out and make the pattern more visible because this is pretty patterned paper. And so if I lay those on top of there, that scalloped edge just disappeared, right? Let me hold it up so you can see what happened there. So we've got lovely scalloped edge, another lovely scalloped edge. I put them one on top of the other. And the scalloped edge completely vanished. <laughs> it just blends right in with the pattern, right? It's like a vanishing magic trick. But if you add a little bit of ink to that scallop, then look at that. It makes it stand out, looks gorgeous, and you can see all that lovely detail that you've added to your project. So let's go ahead. We're going to ink the edges of this one. Now my nose is running after sneezing. There we go, all the way around. And this last one. Now, I said we needed to have six of these. 
And so I have three more that I've already done ahead of time sitting off to the side here. So these are now two inches wide by one and a half inches. I'm just gonna set that there because we're gonna need it again. And look, there's our magical three more for a total of six. And we're going to bring in our little roof, our little roof here. So what I want to do is I'm going to start by adding one of these to my roof, but I want those lovely scallopy bits to kind of hang over the edge. I don't want it to line up with the edge, and I'm going to kind of basically, kind of basically, that's quite a word, kind of basically cover the end here so it's not going to be visible. So let me see. I'll kind of line it up with the Versamat because it's a two inch square. And I'm going to overhang it by three eighths of an inch. How's that for some for some detail? So three eighths of an inch overhanging. Then we're going to take the next one like this, and we're going to put it kind of halfway in between. So you can see where our center crease is sticking up here. So we have three crease lines, two, two and a half, and three inches. And so we're kind of using our, here, I'll fold it right in half. This is our end line. So this next piece is going to go halfway in between. So just kind of, you can measure it if you want, but, and you can use your verse mat to keep everything straight if you want, but it's just gonna go halfway in between like that. Okay, and then we're going to take our last one for this side, add our adhesive, and then this one will line up with that center fold on this five inch by two inch piece for the roof. Okay, now we've kind of covered up that crease, but it's still there, so we can just go ahead and crease that down. Easy peasy. Now we're going to repeat that same process on the other side, but the good thing is this time we don't really have to measure. We just have to line it up with the bit that's overhanging from the first piece we put on. So we've gone to the other side like that. Make sure our piece is all tucked in. And when we fold this down, we can just line up our little scallopy edge so it meets about the same. Then our next piece is going to go halfway between the top of this piece and the top of the roof. Take our backing off. Let's line it up so we can kind of keep, keep things straightish. And we're just going to put that halfway in between. It's about three quarters of an inch from that center crease there at the top, three quarters of an inch, if you'd like to have a specific measurement. And then adding in our last piece. Now you may be wondering why I left my ink sitting there, and it's because we're going to add a little bit of ink just along the top ridge of our birdhouse. So let's grab our little sponge and we'll just add a little bit of ink just to finish off the roof on each side. There we go. So cute. And then of course this can go onto our roof and it's going to come right down and go over top of that opening at the top. Make sure it lines up nice. We can clip it on like so, and you can get a fancy clip, you know, a nice little blue clip so it blends in, whatever you like. But let's add a little bird to our birdhouse. So that's gonna be our last step. And for that, I'm going to use, oops, I'm going to use the Operation Your Smile stamp set. It's got this cute little bird that was just the right size. 
I've got a piece of white daisy here and my intense black ink. Just going to ink up our little birdie. Stamp him on there. And then let's also color him. We're going to use a mix of brown gray and antique pink to color our bird. Going to start with the lightest color of the brown gray blend. And we're going to kind of just color over the whole bird. And this is running low, so it's going to sound scritchy scratchy. I apologize for the scritchy scratchiness. But we're just going to color over the tummy and the wing and then the head of our little birdie like so. Then we're going to switch to the mid color of the brown gray and we're going to add some shadow like that along our bird, along his tummy, under his tail, under his wing, just on the bottom of his wing like that. And maybe even a little bit of the darkest gray just along the edge of a few of those places. And then we can come back in with the light and blend those layers together as much as we can with our half dry marker. <laughs> you can also use the blending marker for this, but the colored marker works good. Just blend them. I even colored outside the lines just for funsies. Then we're going to come in with the antique pink and we're going to add some a little bit of rosy pinky color to our bird like that. That was the mid and I'm going to also add a little bit of the dark just there under his tummy and we'll also add a little bit of the palest on the beak. There we go. That's it. Easy peasy. Simple coloring. Then we're going to rough cut out with our non-stick micro tip scissors. Best scissors for doing some fussy cutting. And then we're going to go around our bird. <coughs> Pardon me. Now I've got a tickle in my throat. First we had the sneeze. Then we had the snuffles. Now we have the tickle. It's the whole gamut this evening. Must be all that wind outside. <laughs> we'll blame it on the weather. Isn't that what the song, how the song goes? Blame it on the rain. And we're just going to go in and around all the little feet. And around the tail. We pivot our paper. I like to use the base of my scissors for the fussy cutting. Leaving a nice halo of the white daisy showing all the way around. Just like that. There we go. There's our cute little birdie. And we're going to add a little bit of adhesive on here. Like that. We could use foam tape, but I'm not going to I'm not going to pop them up mostly because I'm out of foam tape. Got to go shopping. Got to get some. But we're going to add our cute little birdie here onto the front of our box. His little tail can stick out the side. But we're going to leave a lot of that opening still showing so that we can see the fun contents inside. I think this would look really cute with those foil wrapped eggs in there for Easter or the little eggies. That would be super cute for spring. But there we have our complete, completed birdhouse treat box using a mulberry cardstock. We used our circles thin cut to make our hole, then our um, two inch by two inch piece of memory protector to create the little window. Then, of course, we have our periwinkle cardstock on top, adding on that pattern paper that we cut a nice little scallopy edge and inked up. We can, of course, open up our treat box and fill it up with all sorts of good things. You could even put a gift in there. It doesn't have to be chocolate. Um, you know, I'm not saying I'm partial to chocolate or anything, but you could put just about anything in there. You could put a little... Um, you know, spending money in there. You could put 
uh, a little bit of jewelry in there. You could put um, some stickles in there. You could just about put anything you can think of in there. And then give it as a lovely little gift. We've got our bird on the front from that Operation Smile, Your Smile stamp set. And um, colored him up with our Tribeland markers. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this cute little birdhouse come to life. And uh, if you're inspired to create one of these, do be sure to take a photo of it and post uh, your photo in the comments under where I post the um, pictures for this on the Facebook page or in the group. Um, and that way we can all be inspired by what you create. This would be super fun if we made some wood grain. You know how we score and then we drag the ink pad across, make some fun little wood grain or do some sanding, do some embossing on here. That would be fun too. Lots of ideas. So many things that you could create with this same little idea. So just as a reminder, this was inspired by a Pinterest post by Joe Dumbleton. And thank you, Karen, for the inspiration. And so if you guys ever have ideas of things that you've seen and you want me to create them for you so that you can um, understand the instructions of how to put them together, just let me know. Just pop me a message and uh, we'll see what we can do. All right. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you again soon. Toodaloo. Bye.